using an ultrasonic cleaner on my engine collection. Previously I've shown how effective this device was when using a chemical solvent to remove rust. In this video I'm using a solvent designed to clean carburettors. Here is my engine collection in the blue box that it normally lives in and I've also added the OSFS60 which is partially dismantled. Most of these engines in the blue box including the FS60 really are very old. Especially these ED engines. I've had these for many years and as you can see they're quite badly oil stained. The oil that we used to use for model aeroplane engines was castor oil and it was great stuff and it smelt lovely. But it was notorious for sticking to the engine's crankcase and cylinder causing discoloration that was difficult to remove. I've tried just about everything. The dishwasher's good, put it in the dishwasher and it comes out clean but whatever's in the dishwasher tablet does tend to attack the aluminium. This is a British made laser engine and I don't really think this is ready for a clean in the ultrasonic cleaner yet. But most of the others are well overdue for a clean. Originally I was going to use the ultrasonic cleaner just for cleaning the OSFS60 engine. But as this carburetor cleaner liquid called Carbosonic is £15 per litre, I thought it would be a good idea to put all the engines in at one go. Here's the stuff and it does say on the front it makes 20 litres when suitably diluted with water. I would just like to mention at this stage that I am aware that you can put the liquid in a plastic bag then put the part that you want to clean in the plastic bag and put it in the water in the ultrasonic cleaner. But I'm going to do it this way. I don't do that much ultrasonic cleaning so at £15 per litre it's not too bad. What is very important when cleaning engines, whether you use the dishwasher or however you do it, is make sure that the piston covers the exhaust port. This helps to prevent the watered down solvent from entering the internal parts of the engine. It's also a good idea to remove any plastic tanks because they're going to fill up too. But as you can see I didn't do this. I'm slightly concerned what effect the solvent will have on the plastic parts, but I'll find out in due course. I was pleased to find this part, I looked everywhere for it. It's a small aluminium silencer for an OS 4 stroke engine and it fits the FS60. And the small pipe on the side of it connects to the tank. When the second of the pipes that go into the tank is blocked up, then what happens is, as the engine runs, it pressurises the fuel tank and helps to pump the fuel towards the carburettor. I don't think this carburettor cleaner is going to do much for corrosion, it should remove all the dirt but we'll see when I finish doing it. I put just enough hot water in the cleaner to submerge the parts. And if you look carefully you will see that there aren't that many bubbles coming from the engines. That's because the pistons are in such a position on most of the engines that the air stays inside. To be honest though I don't think it really matters. I don't think the solvent and the water contacting the internal parts of the engines would be a problem. I've set the temperature on the front panel of the ultrasonic cleaner to take the water up to 60 degrees and I set the timer to 30 minutes. I decided to run the video a bit faster. This one is running at 12,000% and during this sequence you can see on the left hand display that the water temperature is slowly increasing and the right hand display is counting down to zero. Time to remove the basket and see what the engines look like. I must admit I was quite amazed when I looked how clean the engines were. The only dirty bits left in there are two laser silencers that really were very very black. And this was caused by baked on oil over many years. But the engines, generally speaking, look like new. To see what happened I used some scotch Bright to manually clean the exhaust pipes and then along with the FS60 and another smaller engine I replaced the basket in the ultrasonic cleaner and set it for 25 minutes. Once the job was done it was time to empty the tank and there was quite a lot of residue in the bottom so as the tank was draining I kept stirring it up with a paintbrush. It's really handy having this ultrasonic cleaner on the sink. I never used the draining board anyway because I have a dishwasher and being sat on the sink made it very easy to add more water to flush out the tank and here it is as clean as I could get it. At this point I should mention I live by myself. If you live with a partner you may get some friction if you start putting ultrasonic cleaners on the sink. Time now to go into the workshop. 
This, of course, is WD-40, and I'm going to spray all of the engines thoroughly with this stuff. And I'm also going to add some lubricating oil to the mix. I'm really impressed at the state of the aluminium. Because ultrasonic cleaning is a non-abrasive cleaning, the crankcase looked just about the same as it did when the engine was new. Here, I'm shaking the engine, and as you can see, there are one or two water droplets coming out. But with a further application of WD-40, this chased all the water away from the engine. This, by the way, is a Webra Speed 61 glow engine, and this one is an ED diesel, a very small diesel, and it's very old. But look at the condition, just like the day it was made. In some cases, it's not a good idea to remove the patina entirely. But in this case, I just want them to be clean. Here I'm using compressed air to blow the water out of the tank at the rear of one of the engines. This thing is an engine part, it's a Webra Dynamix carburetor. And once again, it looks like it's almost new. This tiny little engine is one of my favourites, it's a Cox 010, a very small engine. Because the prop is so small on this engine, it's really difficult to get your finger out of the way if you use your finger to start it. The only parts that didn't clean up particularly well were the silencers, and this is the one from an OS engine, and as you can see, it's quite tarnished. The best tool to use to clean this up is my Myford lathe, which is situated in the workshop right behind me. Scotch-Brite was ineffective because this is quite badly pitted. I got better results using some wet or dry sandpaper. This is 400 grit, and now it's cleaning up very well. Unlike ultrasonic cleaning though, I'm removing metal to get this one clean. Next I needed to order some new bearings for the engine. The rear bearing is 12mm by 28mm by 8mm thick. These are the measurements for the front bearing. How strange, 9.53mm? So the rear bearing is metric and the front bearing is imperial. What an interesting combination. 0.375 inches is 3 eighths of an inch. I'm taking no chances, in this clip I'm measuring the crankshaft at the front. And here, using my weapon of choice, I decided to use a micrometer, and yes, it's 375. I ordered two new bearings from a company called modelfixings.co.uk, and I found the man that I spoke to on the phone to be a mine of information and very helpful. He pointed out that strangely enough sometimes they do mix and match both imperial and metric bearings in some engines. The bearings should be with me shortly and I can put the engine back together. Removing the aluminium part with the writing on at the back was a real pain. Usually on this type of engine the cover with the writing on is very easy to remove. There are two slots at the side and you can prise it away from the main casting but not so with this one. I ended up firmly clamping the aluminium plug in the large four-jaw self-centering chuck fitted to my Smart and Brown lathe. That allowed me to remove it without damage. I looked at the bearings inside which were fine, so I oiled the bearings and refitted the cover. I gave the entire engine a coat of WD-40 and then I used lubricating oil on the valve gear at the top. That completes this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.